Well, welcome to Waiting Into Retirement. As you know, I'm Laura, and with me I have... Chris Jackson. And Chris actually helped us buy our home on the water here and helped us sell our last one just well, like five minutes away yeah. from here. And Chris is with Remax Realty. So when thinking about retirement, we had a lot of questions. So I wanted to talk to an expert in the area to get some ideas on, you know, what what is selling are people doing what we're doing, looking at different options and what those options might actually be? So I guess you could start with a little bit of your background and why you know we would have chosen you to yeah. come and do this. So I'm with Remax Finest here in Kingston. Um, I've been doing this for almost nine years now. Uh, we have a couple of rental properties ourselves, so we're familiar with that. And I'm a partner in a property management business as well. So, so all good things. All good things, yeah. All good things real estate. Well, and you are dealing with a lot of people that are now looking to move and to do what we're thinking about doing. Yes, it is a growing trend right now. And, you know, questions you guys have about keeping this, selling this, you know, Airbnb versus rental, and then where to buy is the other key as well. Well, that's true because we have on water, we thought, okay, it'll save and it'll keep its value. And then yeah. if we decided to rent it, it's probably an option. Yeah. So we only bought a couple of years ago Yeah. and you know how much we paid for our house. We, <laughs> yeah. at the time we thought it was a lot of money, but yeah. now we're looking at it. Will we get our money back out of our home even just two years later? Yes, you would. And you're still going to make some money on your house too. Oh. See, that would yeah. be so nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so property values have increased, especially on this lake and being waterfront. Is yeah. it harder though once people decide to sell to if we decide to go somewhere and we don't like it? How difficult is it to then buy back into the market in this area? So in this area, especially if you're looking for waterfront, if at all possible, I always recommend the clients. I know it kind of sounds like I'm talking myself out of business, but I always recommend the clients that if you can afford to buy somewhere else and keep your property here, yeah. I always recommend that first. Well, and that was one of our main considerations. Yeah. The hard part for us is we we aren't sure 100% where we want to go. Like we're yeah. thinking Mexico, so we thought, well, we'll rent there for a year, but then what do we do with this? Like we'll yeah. have the expenses of two places, so is there a potential for, you know, renting, Airbnb? Like, what are the options? So some of your options you could look at. One would be rent, just renting this out. Um, renting that out would be, you know, if you want, hire a property management company, have them come in, find the tenants. You're, you know, kind of falling under that landlord tenant act, yeah. right? So there's some pros and cons to that as well. But if you guys decide you want to move back, it's, you know, giving the tenants proper notice, making sure, you know, helping them find a place possibly. Another option is going short-term rental. Yep. Okay, has some of the benefits of both. Um, ideally for waterfront though, I think if you're looking at more money in your pocket to offset the expenses down south, I would just Airbnb it. So with Airbnb, yeah. because we are in Canada yeah. and our winters are a little bit on the chippy side for yeah. some of our Southern friends, would we be able to just do it during the summer or would it be something that we could carry on like the entire year? Or I know there's ice fishing yeah. because we see them go out a little bit, but yeah. I always think they're, no offense to the ice fishermen, they're a little crazy because it is yeah. really cold out there on that open lake. Yeah. And you can do both. So, oh, so you're, yes. you're going to be less during the winter time yeah. for sure. But there is, you know, good fishing, good ice fishing here. So you will get those, you know, rentals, the short-term rentals, the Airbnb that want to come ice fishing. The summertime is going to be prime time, right? Yeah. That's when you're going to make your most money. Most people reduce rates during the winter time. But having, even with the Airbnb, is having that property management company there, especially if you guys are down south. So if there is a big, long gap, you just build that into your contract where they're going to come out and check on the property once a week just to make sure pipes aren't frozen and all that stuff. And your insurance company is going to want you to do that anyway. I never thought about insurance. Yeah. So that's a good thing to talk to our insurance people yeah. about because I hadn't thought about that. The other thing, ours is only a one bedroom, one bath home. Yeah. Um, we have plenty of space in our loft here. Yeah. Obviously put another. Is that better for us, like for wear and tear? I've 
talked to a couple of people who mm-hmm. have Airbnb, like three bedroom houses, hoping to maximize the yeah. income. But then they have found it seems to be uh, a lot of people in. It's not just, you know, a family with a couple of kids. It's like, you know, three couples yeah. or and there's more wear and tear on. Yeah, so there there would be more wear and tear. Like you said, you know, having the one bedroom, this area you guys have up here, you could throw some beds down here so a family could come down and kids come up here and sleep, you know, mom and dad downstairs kind of thing. So I, you will get a little bit less, but you're going to only get wear and tear because you're not going to get three couples or, you know, 10 people trying to cram in. So on that part, yeah, it's going to save you money in the long run, but it'll be less money out front. Well, the other thing is that... Um, Michael will probably want to edit this part out because we <laughs> are minimal, like we're downsizing. Yeah. But one of the things that we realize is going to be a couple of years before we can do that. Mm-hmm. So we, as you know, had a little boat come with the house. Mm-hmm. We sold the little boat. We have a little boat house. And I have said to him, what about like a monkey for the boat house? Would yeah. that also be a potential for adding or would it not really add to an Airbnb or to rentals? So I don't, unless you're going to put a bedroom and maybe a bathroom down there because you guys yeah. have some stairs that go down to the waterfront. Yes. I think it'd be a major rental for that. I'd almost use that as upgrade that and maybe just use that for all the toys you're going to have for your Airbnb. Okay. So if you okay. have some kayaks and stuff like that there and use that more as a storage, maybe to store some of your stuff here that you don't want the people Airbnb and using or... That's a good point. Yeah. I think you've talked to Michael too because he doesn't want to do anything <laughs> with the boat house. <laughs> I shouldn't shouldn't say yeah. that. So as you said with the property management company, mm-hmm. you mentioned that earlier. Is are there a lot like that are out there? There's a lot of property management companies there out there. Is. Yeah. The in this area. Oh, same yeah, there's a lot out that. there. Yeah. So that wouldn't be as big of a deal. And I know Airbnb, they take quite a chunk by times depending on how it's run yeah how it's run and what their percentage is if you run it through the airbnb website but there is a few more websites you can book through as well that would. and then you have to take that cost off also looking at your costs for the property management company true that is right? true and they're going to range anywhere from seven to ten percent well that's not as bad as i thought though yeah because like you said that there is some things involved with yeah. that of checking and mm-hmm. you know i i do get there is, it's not cheap and we live away from town so it's yeah. not like they can just go a couple of blocks and yeah. check on it too and just to make sure as well with you guys out here is make sure that you get a property management company that is familiar with septic and wells and that checking those things and to watch out for that as well yes because that was a concern even when we purchased here yeah. what's that going to look like and we Thank goodness I haven't had any issues and yeah. water isn't a problem either. But I have heard of other people living on lakes where even the um, water intake, if it's lake intake, freezes. Yeah. yeah. So it is all. So I'm going to throw this out there because yeah. you're younger than I am. <laughs> Knowing you have a beautiful home as well. Mm-hmm. Going into retirement, what would you do or and what would you recommend if it's not the same thing? So... I would actually probably do the same thing I recommend. Yep. So if I could at all, if I could afford a place down south while keeping the one here, I would keep the one here. You know, waterfront, you're, I don't want to say never, but you're really never going to lose, On it. right? Even if you break even for those years, I think just coming back, if you were to sell here, go down south somewhere, do a couple of years and just say, this is not for us and come back into the market, it may cost you $100,000 more to buy the same house back. Yeah. And you don't really want to come back and then rent, you know, because, you know, it, just because then they're renting, you're going to lose money every single month. And if, if your investments go down, anything like that, at least with a house, when it's time to move on into more senior living, yep. you'll have that house to sell and bank that money instead of dripping away and pulling away from that money right off the bat. Well, and that was kind of the concern that I had. I I was really afraid that trying to get back into the market, it just might be out of our region, even Mm -hmm. um, if we had to do a mortgage, you know, when you're retired and you don't, you have a fixed income, you don't have that um, income and income potential for a number of years. I'm not sure if banks are as willing to you know, it is tougher or once you get retired. Pockets yeah, a little bit yeah, to for it. sure. Well, it does sound like you would do yourself out of a job then. I would. Just... <laughs> I know I would. I know I would. But I know, like knowing you guys and just knowing what I would do myself, it's 
I think it would be better for you guys if you could swing both. Both. Yeah. Well, I think that that's kind of the way we're leaning, and yeah. we would really like to do that. Although it's always a pleasure to see. Yeah. You. <laughs> so I don't I, mind coming by at all. <laughs> well, thank you again, no and uh, I guess that's we'll say goodbye for now. Please let us know if you have any questions. And once again, Chris is with Remax Realty, so I've trusted your judgment, and I can only say thank you for all of your help. Thank you, Norris. Bye, Bye for now. <laughs>